gonna be the hardest. We're joined now by a three-time Super Bowl champion, the guy who was there when Tom Brady was drafted, <laughs> and he's a guy who's a patriot, original Patriot, all this. <laughs> Eric Mangini. Hi, Coach. Uh -huh. How are you? Uh -huh. Nick, I, I heard you talk about me coming on and saying I was going to make fun of you and laugh at you. I think I've been very sensitive to your feelings during this difficult time where you were so incredibly wrong. I didn't text you after the game. I didn't call you after the game. I didn't, I didn't gloat about all the ways that you were wrong. I, and I think I deserve a little bit of credit for that because of our, our friendship and and how you know um, that's true concern, you know concerned, what you know what you didn't I rub it in i didn't you didn't I rub didn't. it in that is true to coach's credit he didn't rub it in in fact he texted me monday saying is are you okay <laughs> yet and i said i don't know and the follow up was okay just wanting to know how long i have to wait before i make fun of you and now you're on the show today so you did at least give me about a 36 hour grace period okay so here's my question, Coach. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to do something near and dear to your heart about the game, and then we can go big picture. I, I thought this goes on the list of as far as defensive coaching performances, what Belichick did in the first, in the Bills-Giants Super Bowl in 1990 against Jim Kelly and that seemingly unstoppable offense held him to the teens, what you guys did to the greatest show on turf, and then what Todd Bowles did, I understand the Chiefs offensive line was banged up. That's not the whole story there. When you were watching it as a defensive coach, what were you seeing and what was your level of appreciation for what they were able to do? Well, there, there are a few things that, that I've looked at and, and I really like that Tampa Bay was doing. First of all, they, they did play complimentary football. And, and I know you've heard that term a, a million times, but I thought both sides had, had a very sound approach especially based off what happened the first game the the thing that that tampa did really well this time is they were going to take away tyreek hill and they were going to play from high to low and they were going to mix in some a bunch of split safety defense where they actually went up and were able to jam some of the receivers and there were multiple times where they had someone on tyreek hill and and hitting him so that he couldn't get a clean release now, looking at that, I really expected that Kansas City would have run the ball more than they did. And I think that was, was the, the biggest issue. They ran the ball, what, nine times with, with, um, with Hilaire, and, and three of those were yeah. in the first drive of the second half, and, and very effective. But when you've got two tackles that you know are going to struggle, and they're playing seven-man boxes, which gives you an opportunity to run, and, and you don't run, that that's a problem and 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 it could have created so many other opportunities for the offense and and look i know it's hard when you're as prolific as they are passing the ball to think okay we're going to establish a running game but by not doing that it it caused problems it caused real problems so if they were going to just drop back and pass then the quest and they score no touchdowns I think the simple explanation is Mahomes didn't play very well. How much of this, in your opinion, is on Mahomes? How do you think he played? No, I don't think it's, it's all a function of Mahomes. There were several times, especially early in the game, where guys were covered down the field. And, and, and look, he did have less time than he traditionally has because of, of the problems they had on the O-line and, and how good Tampa's defensive line um, is. And, and he scrambled for the first down. And that's what you do against split safety defense with man-to-man. With -man. Everybody's got their back turned, and, and he was able to go get some first downs. And he made those incredible throws in the second half that were incompletions. But there were some pretty incredible incompletions in the first half, too. The one that hit Tyreek Hill in the, in the face mask in the end zone. Uh, I think Kelsey dropped one, uh, at least one, in the first half that was another off-balance throw that, that Mahomes had. It, it, you have to, you have to help him. And as much as he is a, a, a Superman, at some point you still have to be able to help that guy, especially if, if, if they're struggling. All right, let's go bigger picture now, and let's never talk about the Super Bowl ever again. Our whole yeah, life. we didn't even get to um, talk so about Bruce Tom Brady and all that he did. <laughs> well, we, well, we got, well, I'm we going to get to Brady here. Whole, 
We've got a lot of time. We've got a lot of time. It, yeah, we got a whole off season. We got we got a lot of time. Uh, all right. So I, Bruce Arian said before the Super Bowl, but it came out yesterday that he believes Brady was motivated by proving it wasn't all Belichick. And I've talked with you a bunch about this, and I don't. I don't. We don't need to rehash the ground of. Brady gets there, he's a sixth round pick. You guys saw these amazing traits, but he, you guys, Tom did it himself, but also with a lot of great coaching, molded himself into who he is now. That to me is not the most interesting part. The interesting part is the end of the relationship. And that is what I wanna know when you, have a, you know both guys, if you think how much that motivated Brady. That Brady believed, I can still do it. And Bill believed, you're not going to be able to still do it. And I'm not going to be caught late on this. I'm never late on this. And that, even if you guys get all shared credit for the beginning, the end was not how Tom wanted it to be. So how much of Brady this postseason and this year was part of, do you think, Bill, Bill gave up on me. When everyone's done talking, Bill thought I couldn't do something, and I'm going to prove to everyone I can. How much do you buy into that? Well, I would understand why, why Tom got that feeling. I, I really believe that Tom wanted to go back to New England and that it was his intention to finish out his career there and be able to do what he did this year again in New England and defy the odds like he's always defied the odds in terms of how long he could play and, and, and um, how he could do, defy really Mother Nature at, at, at this point. And and one of the things that Bill's been really good at is is moving on from players, and it's with a with a ruthless efficiency that other head coaches and other organizations haven't been able to do. And and he's done it for years and years, where where New England legends have either been traded or cut or or, or whatever the whatever the case may be. Now, for Tom, if you're there and you see it happen over and over and over again. At some point, you know it's probably going to happen to you, and, and it did. And, and Tom, I believe, finds motivation a lot of different ways, but but that probably probably stung. In and, and too, Nick, remember there was the whole Jimmy Garoppolo situation even before yeah. that, where there was discussion about moving on from Tom. All right, so Russell Wilson went on Dan Patrick's show today and said, "Listen, I want a seat at the table." When it comes to fig, you know, building my offensive line, figuring out personnel, and I don't have a seat at that table. One of the things that I find very impressive about you is just in talking football with you, even though I think you came from a very old school kind of football upbringing, your opinions on these things seem to be more evolved and more modernized than I think a lot of guys from, not that you're an older era, but from your kind of football upbringing. If you were running a team right now and you had a star quarterback, how much of a voice would you give him in the personnel side of things, understanding it's 2021 and guys have different expectations than they did in 2011, 2001, or 1991? Well, Nick, it, it, the personnel side of it isn't isn't as clear cut a, as I think some people believe it is, and and the decisions that that have to be made, they aren't aren't clean and apparent. There is a huge process that that takes place between if you just look at the draft process, the amount of research, the amount of reports that 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 are written, the 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 level of discussion, the slotting of the boards. There's hours and hours and hours of time that that go into that and so if if someone wanted to be involved in that process if russell wilson wanted to be involved in that process i i would love him to but i would expect him to come in and and actually do the things that that you need to do to be able to make the decision that that he wants to be a part of i i think he's smart i think obviously it impacts him as much as as anybody but you just can't show up and say okay I want that guy, I want that guy, I want that guy. And then you also have to look at it in terms of, if you're talking about free agency, how does it fit into the salary cap? How does it fit into the locker room? There, there's layers to this that Russell could could handle, and his input would probably be very valuable, but it is it is time-consuming, and you just can't, 
You can't just show up and pick. Coach, I appreciate you. Uh, tell your son, that your best son, I forget which one it is, the one that's the Mahomes fan, tell him I feel badly for him. <laughs> uh, your other sons that are the Brady fans, tell them I don't feel badly for them at all. I'll talk to you later, Coach. Thank you. All right, we'll see you later, Nick. Absolutely. There's my friend, Coach Eric Mangini. Here's Joy with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Sometimes driving is great, but sometimes it's not so great. Like when it's pouring outside, like when the snow is swirling, that's when you need new Michelin Endurance XT silicone wiper blades designed to repel water, snow, and ice. Get yours today only at Walmart. So the Cowboys released a hype video to get fans ready for the 2021 Ooh, season. Yeah. One important it. player was pretty noticeably absent from said video. Dak Prescott, who is still not signed a long-term deal with the team, was not featured at any point in this video, which fans uh, and media took notice of, obviously. Cowboys director of media and programming, Derek Eagleton, said it was a simple mistake. He tweeted this was a simple oversight that should have been caught and corrected by us. Anyone who's making it seem like the Cowboys decision makers use social media videos to make statements doesn't understand or take the time to understand how it all works. Trust me, there's no story here. Look, perhaps this was just a simple oversight, as he stated. Perhaps. Perhaps it was not so simple, oh. and someone said, don't put Dak in oh. any of the pre-season pre hype.